Ich promoviere in Altgermanistik, ich habe in Zürich aus Versehen gewonnen, jetzt muss ich beim Europafinale antanzen, ich war die ganze Woche in Prag im Handschriftenarchiv und soll jetzt auf Englisch slammen. Now we have the salad. Ever since I was a little boy, I have loved playing dress up. Here's a picture of me at my first communion. As you can see, I've always been rather short and always needed glasses, had chubby cheeks and was convinced to be the smartest guy in the room. Well, that gave me a lot of free time. So I turned to books. They don't run away if you ask them, want to play? I later went to Heidelberg and then to Berlin to study literature and write my thesis on the so-called Heilspiegel Handschrift A. Ah, this is the title. Please note the colon, doppelpunkt. It's what qualifies as humanists for leadership positions. We know how to divide by punctuation. First the nonsense, then the bullshit. Anyway, I conducted a literary analysis and asked why this specific text type emerged in the 14th century. I also did a codicological analysis. Since we are all Greeks here, we know that this is Latin and deals with the specifics of codexes as a type of book. That's where I got my master, that's who paid for it. By the way, they filed me under materials for five years. Just imagine what that does to a young adult. We start with the definition of terms. Take a look at where the text witnesses are located. Make a quick detour to the specific of, uh, typological text before we find ourselves in the presence of questions about the source materials. If you then are still up for it, we dive into the problem of translation, the emotional climax of the slam, and finish with a smooth focus on grammar. You can kill any interesting topic with the pseudo-intellectual index I learned in 19 semesters. Let's take a look at the first part of the Heilsspiegel. It deals with the concept of Seelenheil and is a Christological concept. All men, sorry ladies, Augustine said so, are born without sin. And now it's up to us to get through this life without sin so that we can die with our souls intact. That would look something like this from Bamberg Cathedral. Here we have a very uplifting depiction of the Last Judgment. Jesus in the center, weighing souls, the devil, guiding them into the nation, and some monks who made it across the finish line and may enter paradise. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what Salem High looks like. Please notice there was no cocaine back then. <laughs> Moving on to part two, Spiegel Literatur. It's supposed to educate the reader, or as Augustine put it, just because a monkey looks into a book, a prophet won't look back at him. Each well-known example of Spiegel Literatur contains at least one very useful life hack. The Fürstenspiegel suggests, reign justly, don't abuse your employees. The Schwabenspiegel reminds Swabians, be frugal. Today's Palatschinken is tomorrow's Frittatensoup. And then there's the Heilsspiegel. These texts are written in Latin and originated in Bologna. Important manuscripts can be found in Toledo, Paris, the Netherlands, and the former Austrian Empire, which makes sense since Austria was all about representation back then. Luckily, this has changed. The Heilsspiegel texts are likely a Dominican invention since they quote Thomas Aquinas every chance they get. You all know him. He was the godfather of the Dominican order and a man so keusch, dass er sich geweigert hat, von einem ausgezogenen Tisch zu essen. The Heilsspiegel is structured typologically and follows a simple idea, learning by repetition. Typologically means that every event in the Old Testament is believed to be a foreshadow of an event in the New Testament. Each chapter is structured in a similar way. Three types from the Old Testament are linked with one anti-type uh, in the New Testament. Please let me illustrate that. In one chapter, type one is the burial of Abner, a friend of King David. Here you see Abner. Well, you don't see him since he's in the box. And this is David. Uh, Presumably very sad. Let's keep that in mind. Man, sad, box. Type two is Joseph who is thrown into the pit by his jealous brothers. Again, man, sad, box. Type three is Jonah abandoning ship after and Gottes Urteil. Here you see Jonah, probably sad, and the whale, again the box, that, will have, uh, that he will have to stay inside for the next three days. By the way, this is what whales look like that are drawn by a person who had never seen a whale. <laughs> you have already figured it out. The respective antitype is the entombment of Christ. As you can see, box, a man, still sad in death. You would expect that his mother is sad, but as we've already seen, the illustrator wasn't that brilliant. Even as a book itself, the Heilsspiegel was designed to be educational. The monk sits down, pushes away the altar boy, puts the book in his lap, opens an entire chapter with each double page. These books are the first comic strips in literary history. The text doesn't work without the picture. The picture itself is nothing without the text. My professor walked on a Vollhandschrift, up to 100 verses, one chapter per double page. And what did I get? 
no illustrations, but at least some water damage. In Berlin, you take what you get. Remember, five years under materials. You always need some numbers in the slam, I was told. Here we go. 421 Heilspiegel manuscripts in all of Europe. Two-fifths of these are illustrated. 90 translations into virtual every European language. And in case anyone wants to, to tell you that there is such a thing that Austrian national medieval literature, uh, he's not only wrong, but also a phony. In those times, there were no national literary styles. There were just topics and motives. In any case, we have 55 manuscripts in German, and 26 are ADV. ADV is not a political party, but an acronym. There are a lot of German text <laughs> with an unknown author. This is a continuity in literature. So keep your handkerchiefs ready. We approach the emotional climax. Who here took Latin in school? Oh, Felix Austria. In Berlin muss ich fragen, wer war überhaupt auf einer Schule? Okay, imagine you are a scribe in the Middle Ages. It's Monday morning, your boss walks in and asks you to translate 100 verses, but after that, uh, the problem is Latin is a very dense language. So you see 100 verses in Latin, 100 in German. This is a big problem, how to keep the rhyming scheme. For example, Christ is buried in a burial chamber. This habet circa septem vel octo pedes tam in longum cum in latum. It's about seven to eight feet long and wide. There's metrics, there's rhyme. Our translator turns this into acht fuß breit und lang. Huh? The essentials still come across. The second burial chamber is of e andem longitudinem, latitudinem, et altitudinem, so equally long, wide, and high. Our translator translates, auch viel no acht fuß breit und lang. Huh? You see what he did here? Can you feel his desperation? Next line. The body of Christ lies on a bench. Of course, he lies on a bench, not on the ground. He's the son of God, not a sandler. That bench runs the uno pariete ad alterum from one wall to the other. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our translator shows his true genius and ability to visualize the dimensions of Christ's burial site. He writes, the bench is acht fuß lang. <laughs> this is great. Finally, let's have a look at the grammar. The question was, which language level manuscript A has? It took me three months of thorough research to place this manuscript somewhere along the Rhine, which is great, since this river is one of the most important trade routes in medieval Europe. So you have a lot of different linguistic influences. This is one more reason why us humanists are the best choice for leadership positions. We find very complex answers to very simple questions. And we are always alarmed if someone comes around offering simple solutions for complex problems. And this is how you feel after three months of grammar analysis. I went down the famous Sonnenallee in Berlin, Neukölln, like this. It didn't end well, but I needed new glasses anyway. Thank you very much, Vienna.